So, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Maxence, and I'm pretty happy to be here in, uh, in Vienna. This is the first time for me. And for now, I, I really like the city, so it's really cool. Uh, we're gonna talk for, I'm gonna talk for, for the next hour about the, the progressive web apps. Uh, yes. All of my slide, everything, uh, this is my slide deck, um, maxpoo.fr slash talk. Uh, I'm going to give some, some numbers, etc. So if you want to check the source, ex uh, even if you want to, to see back the, the slide after, go, go here. After, you just need to select uh, the, correct, uh, the correct talk, which is uh, progressive way back. OK. So uh, this is the, the starting point of of my talk, um, months ago, I read. Uh, I, I start to find on the on the on Twitter on some blog posts were talking about native apps, and I calling to some people. Uh, they were doomed. So I start to to dig into uh, into that, and I find some interesting uh, studies, interesting statistics about it. Uh, First of all, 50% of the American user download zero app per month. Uh, then only 10% download one app a month, and after one other 10%, etc. Okay, I also find that most of the time we spend on our smartphone is on the three uh, on the top three app, and also. Uh, Last point, it's more about revenue. Uh, it's pretty hard if you are doing uh, a native application to get revenue from this. If you are out of this, um, this publisher, so or the Google, etc. Um, there is another problem. If if your company got an app, it's hard to to reach people. Uh, what I mean is, on every step you got for. Uh, on every step, you are losing 20% of the user. So you have to find an app, you lost 20 users. Then you click on the detail, you lost uh, 20 users, etc., etc., etc. So at the end, if if you want to reach uh, 1,000 users, at the end, maybe uh, 262, according to this study, uh, 262. Yeah, it's it's an average, but gonna use the app. And on this 262. Uh, the studies say 75% 50, 50, of the user download an app, use it once, and never come back. On the day two, we get uh, we are more than 80%. Tac 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 tac. Until at three months after, or even yeah, three months after, we got something close to 5% of the user we still use your application. The the reason is. One of the reasons is sometimes we have to, to download an app and we don't really want it. When I came here in Vienna, I had to install the, an app for, a, f um, for Lutzfanza, I think. Uh, I'm just going to use this app once and look, it's, yeah, it was pretty similar, something like 40 megabytes, just to show one QR code to the, uh, yeah, uh, on the airport. That's only why I need an app uh, for this. After there is some use case, it's still relevant. Uh, about, uh, about reachability also. Um, because of all of this friction, it's hard for you to, to get new customers on, the, on your app. And on the other hand, uh, a mobile with, with the web, it's pretty more simple. To, to reach new customers. But, but uh, if you got an app, you probably, you probably know that the user spend more time on the, on the native app than uh, a mobile uh, application. Why? The answer is pretty simple. Um, you got notification. The user got already the icon on the on the desktop, so yeah, there is more engagement. So let's summarize. We got 
two things. We got the mobile app and the website. We, with the mobile app, we can do a lot of things. Uh, there is a lot of capability, etc. But the reachability is really hard. And here, my web app, I can reach a lot of people, but I cannot retain them. So some people, mostly from, from Google, they they start from, from this starting point and say, okay, how to put, uh, how to increase the my website and get something with more capabilities. So that's that the main, uh, yeah, the main reason to to you to switch to something called the the progressive web apps. So we're gonna try to put at the same level. Uh, in terms of functionalities, a native app and a web app. The progressive web apps, it's, uh, it's just a set of, of correct rules that your web apps have to, have to reach. So take care, you don't need to update your, uh, your LinkedIn profile right now. You probably do some, uh, some of them. The first one, one of the first uh, rules is uh, get links. One page equal one link. Welcome to the HTTP protocol. Something it's pretty basic. So I'm not gonna stay longer on this slide. Um, I was talking about HTTP. We could add an S. You recognize the lock here. Um, for years, uh, people didn't switch to HTTPS because of money. They did not want to buy a certificate. I have a good news since uh, 2016 now. Uh, there is something called Let's Unscript. And now this organization provides a uh, free certificate. And no, it's not from hipster or beatniks. Look, there is a lot of, <laughs> look, this sponsor. I mean, we can trust this. Okay, uh, the third point, really basic as well, responsive. Uh, if you still don't know what's responsive, remember this picture from uh, Stephanie Walter. Uh, and she said, uh, um, yeah, content, content is like, it's like water. So don't want to put all the data from this screen to, the, to your mobile. Let's do something, uh, yeah responsive to adapt to, to, to the device. Now we start to, to reach something a bit more interesting because you probably already follow all this, this third, uh, the, yeah, this three step. The, the, first, the fourth one is uh, getting something more uh, app-like. So when you are using a progressive web app, you should not think about, I am on the web, I am on the app. No, it should, see, it should be the the same experience. Um, there is something interesting called the application chain uh, architecture. Um, so given I'm, uh, I'm a shop and I want to, to, show, some, uh, to show some clothes, uh, George.com did that. Uh, they cache, they put uh, this on the, the left um, Sorry, the left, uh, the left screen. So all the architecture, etc. You keep it. Uh, it's instant, instantly loaded, and then you do a asynchronous request to the network, and you go and you fetch uh, the data. And when the data are here, it feed the. Um, it it feed the screen. Uh, you got something pretty similar if you are using uh, Microsoft Teams. It's an equivalent to. To, to Slack, and there is also this, I think, in, uh, in Facebook, when you scroll really, really fast, you just see the architecture. Uh, here also uh, an interesting study, uh, judge.com reduced the, the page load by 3.8 by using this. So it's something really interesting. Yeah. Uh, the fifth point. The fifth point is uh, getting something uh, progressive. Um, 
there is a framework I'm using, which is called uh, which, uh, I'm using in my company. It's called Vue.js, and they say it's a progressive web framework. It means uh, you can use this, uh, you can create some small components in this technology in uh, old-fashioned uh, websites without breaking everything, etc. So here it's kind of the same. Um, there is a lot of div diversity of browsers, so if you want to, to add something fancy um, in your browser, it should not impact the, the whole browsers. Because, yes, unfortunately, not every browser are the same. Uh, this is a screen from uh, Firefox, Firefox uh, 58. So as you can see, um, I cannot uh, I cannot do some uh, Bluetooth, USB, NFC, etc. But if I check it with my Chrome here, I think I'm gonna get something slightly different. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, for instance, uh, this uh, and the back background sync, etc. It's not the same in uh, Firefox than in uh, in Chrome. The six points. It's getting uh, a fresh. Uh, application fresh. By fresh, I mean always up to date. Uh, there is something here, a new world. Uh, service workers, I will come back in this notion just after. Uh, the idea behind this is uh, to get an application always up to date. Uh, here, if you see, this is my uh, an app from my bank. I updated it four days ago, and they already asked me to um, to do an update. Well, sometimes it's it's not a big deal, but when I need this app, uh, I, I sometimes I just need it right now. Like uh, this is what I get uh, the other day. Uh, I came back from uh, f from work and I just wanted to to play to my race game, and I got this screen say, not today. Uh, well, here it's okay, it's 48 megabits, but sometimes it's even more, and it's pretty annoying. Uh, so the idea behind this is to use something called uh, um, background uh, sync, uh, to use some task in background to update your app. Um, if you are using some browsers like uh, Firefox, Chrome, it's they are working like this. You get an update, and they just say, "Oh, next time you're gonna uh, you're gonna reload the browser. We're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a new uh, you're gonna get a new a new version." But they they don't, they don't block you. So this is the idea. The seventh point is um, about installation. As I say before. Um, Something good with your uh, with native apps is you got the icon on the screen. So here the idea is exactly the same. Y you should be able to get uh, your web uh, your web icon on screen. Oops. Um, this is the progressive web apps I did uh, with this UGS framework, and it's based on the GitHub API, so I call it GitHub. Um, if you see here. There is a, a small house with a plus, so it means it's a progressive web app. So you can install, uh, you can install this app. So if I click here, I will get something like this. Do you want to add uh, this application on your screen? I click on Add to a Screen, and here I got it like this. So this is my phone. Uh, you got two icons here in the middle. One from uh, Firefox. And the other one from uh, Chrome. And the difference between uh, this and the shortcut, because you know sometimes you can just take a shortcut on the website and put it on your on your on your home um, on your home page. 
but here it's considered by your um, by your um, sorry your um, your operating system as an application, which means I can after find it if I want to find an application in my phone. Uh, there is also something. So these slides are progressive web apps friendly, which means I can also install them. So I'm on Chrome here, and if I want to to install my application, wait. Here I just need I click add to home screen. And it doesn't work. <laughs> uh. Oh, no, my bad. I didn't so. Look, uh, there is a, uh, add this application uh, to your shelf. So you click add. And cool, my browser is gone. <laughs> wow, demo effect. OK. Uh, let's restart this. OK, install. I inspect. I go on the application, add to home screen, add. OK, add to, uh, add to your desktop. So here, this is how it's working in uh, Ubuntu. And after, I got something pretty weird here. Uh, so I click. I say trust and launch, and tada! I got my slide, and it's look like uh, it's look like an app. And look, I can also here put it on my uh, on my dock. You you got something pretty similar on um, OS X. I didn't test on uh, on Microsoft on Microsoft. I didn't test it on Microsoft, so, so yeah, every uh, every browser got a different way of handling this uh, this small house, uh, the the install button. Um, I think in um, in Opera, it's on the left. It also look like uh, it's there is also a plus. Uh, in Chrome, you must visit the page uh, two times to to get this. And yeah, that's it. The um, oh. You you might think okay it's good oh how can I get the, this plus button on my uh, on my website? Th there is something called um, the the manifest.json. Uh, it's it's a web app manifest and it allow your uh, application to be discoverable. So the web app the JSON it's it's a file where you can put some different uh, some different information about your. Uh, about your uh, your web app, so you get the name, a short name. The short name it's for the it's to put it on the on the screen, on the on your home screen. Uh, then you got a set of icons. As far I remember, for Chrome you need uh, an icon with 500 pixels, something like this. Start URL, it's the entry point. Um, check out. I put a uh, source equal home screen. Uh, if you if you check the the spec of the of the web app manifest, they say you can you can do this for um, uh, analytics. So after, if you got some Google Analytics or something like this, you can say, okay, I got 10% of users using this um, this web apps from the screen. Uh, also. Display full screen. Uh, if you check on my web app, on my when I when I checked just before the, the installation, you, you didn't saw the um, you didn't saw all the the panel from uh, from the browser, and mostly the most important here is we don't see the URL bar, so it really look like an a real app from uh, from your phone. And after you can put some background color and theme color. I got another example here, so. I'm still on Chrome. If you want to to check uh, your web app manifest on Chrome, you got the the developers tools, and you just yeah go on manifest. 
you will see the, the name, the short name, etc. And the add to home screen. So if something is wrong, Google will the, the tool will tell you and say, oh, I cannot add it on the screen because of this, this, this. So here I put this, some colors, and I got all of my set of icons. Uh, something cool, there is a lot of websites. You just put one icon and they generate everything, including the, the manifest.json. So it's pretty easy to do. Also, I was talking about uh, Microsoft. I said I don't, I don't know how, how did they manage the, this, but I got the good news. Um, Microsoft want to crawl all the progressive web app from the from the web, convert them into something weird. I don't know what is appx, but after what what they want to do is to to put them in the Windows Store, so as a real application. I think it's something really cool, but look, uh, I put the scientist here, so it's it's still in draft. So we have to wait. They say 2018, so I think, but it was in September, so I think we have to wait something like six months, and after maybe we're going to see some application in the Microsoft Store. So here, for uh, to reach new customer, it can be pretty good. Another point to increase the engagement with your customers is the, the notification. Um, you probably saw it already in some website. Well, sometimes it's a bit annoying because when you open a website, say, oh, can, can I send you notifications? So you accept or you decline. And it looks like this. So I have to turn off. And here, when I click, I got some notification from uh, from the um, yeah the operating system, and here it say okay so you got uh, you got a notification from the application called PWA. Uh, this is the website and this is the message. And now, the about uh, connection, um, because the ten point, the this point is about yeah, uh, making a website offline. Because the the best request is no request. Uh, it was my face when I saw this. I say, whoa, I have to do a website offline. Uh, yeah, let's explain how it's work. Oh, no, before. Why? Why? Well, we are in good country with really nice internet connection, but unfortunately, it's not the same everywhere. Um, so, yeah, in Australia, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm working in Ireland, it's pretty good too, but if you check in uh, some country in Asia, in Africa, in South America, it's not good. Um, well, even in France, it's one of the best, but I'm sure when my parents gonna see this talk on YouTube, they will not see it in HD because they got a pretty, pretty bad connection. And also something that we have to keep in mind, it's 45% of the world population, it's still on 2G network. So we have to think about these people. There is still people in uh, in Africa, they, they download, uh, um, what's the name? Uh, an Android app, and after they can give them to each other in uh, by USB. So yeah, unfortunately, not everybody got a really fast Wi-Fi. So how does it work? Uh, there is something called a Service Worker. This is a web page on the network. Something really basic. If you want to to see the the page, you do an HTTP GET to uh, to the network. And um, something is coming in the in the browser. Well, it's already here, but the the, the document from the W3C is still in draft, but it's already implemented in all the browsers. Uh, basically, you got your web page. 
if you want to, to access to the network, there is something in the middle called a service worker. Um, it's not only a proxy. Some people resume a service worker as a proxy, but it's, it can do much more. But the, the interesting part for from this point is uh, what we can do with a service worker. So I want to access to the network, and the service worker say, oh, I saw this request. Maybe I can put it in the cache. So then, if you want to get it again, you just need to call the cache. Uh, and all of this is browser side. Wh when I saw this, I say, wow, it's pretty cool, because now I can do a lot of things uh, in, my, uh, in my application. Uh, Jake Archibald wrote something called the Offline Cookbook. And in this Offline Cookbook, he, he gave us some, um, some pattern from uh, offline strategy. This one is cache first. Uh, you want to load a page. And so first, you ask to the, to the cache. If there is no, nothing in the cache, then you fall back on the network. There is another one. It's the opposite. It's network, uh, network first, otherwise you go on the cache. Um, yeah, for instance, if I'm a shop and I want to show the product, I can use this. But maybe for real sensitive data, like the price or the availability, maybe I want to, to do something like network only. So no way, you don't put anything in the cache. Uh, some more interesting, uh, the cache then network. So look, I ask uh, in parallel to the cache and to the network. The cache returns me the data, and the, on the same time, I'm going on the, on the network, and after, I can retrieve the data. So while I'm navigating on the website, the data, so first at T0, I got the, the data from the cache. And after, why I'm navigating, the data are getting up to date. Something pretty similar, it's my favorite, it's uh, style while revalidate. Um, you always saw the, um, the assets, but from uh, t minus one, uh, from uh, the, the last time you, you were on the, on the website. It can be interesting for assets like JavaScript files, CSS, etc. Um, so first page, the user saw the so when the user go in your website, he saw the, the result from yesterday, or for uh, the last time he went to your website, and etc. But if you got a single page application, maybe it doesn't make sense, but if you don't have a single page application, a website like Facebook, usually you don't do only one click, you, you reload the page several times. So on the first page, you get the version from yesterday, maybe, but the page load instantly. And on the second page, you got the, some up-to-date data. So I gave you some uh, few strategy for offline. There is much more in the in this website uh, in this cookbook. I recommend you to to take a look. And yeah, you can also follow this guy, Jake uh, Archibald. It's pretty good guy from uh, from Google. Now, how does it work? How does it work? All of this. Oh, oh I can do that on my website. Uh, this is some JavaScript uh, code. Basically, everything is based on promise, but pff, I don't know about you, but sometimes it can be a bit annoying to, to write very huge text, huge, um, huge code, uh, code just to, to manage my assets. There is something called Workbox. Workbox, it's a pretty good tool, uh, sponsored by Google, by the way. And basically, it looks like this. So. On the first parameter of this function, so, uh, so I define some roots, and I say, OK, uh, everything which look like uh, PNG, GIF, etc., all the image, I want to apply a cache-first strategy. I can also put some fancy name, like uh, the, the name of, of the cache is going to be image. Uh, you only store 60, uh, 60 image, and for a duration of 30 days. Or if you want something way more simple, you can do something like this. Uh, here, I want uh, to store all the HTTP calls from um, the um, GitHub API. And then I want to apply the network-first strategy. I'm sorry for you. There is no uh, 
you have to deal with uh, regex. So if you are not, if like me, you are not a big fan of regex, it can be uh, a small issue. Now let's switch to the 11 points, single page application. No, I'm joking. Uh, and hopefully, the, there is a lot of people that say you have, to be, uh, you have to build a single page application to do a progressive web apps. It's wrong. And it's something pretty cool because building a single page application is hard. So no single page application. So let's summarize. This is my definition of uh, a progressive web app. It's just something really cool, like this. So you got a website and the progressive web app. But it's not really professional. So let's switch to, to another definition from Alex Russell, uh, another guy from Google, which is working on uh, progressive web apps. Um, it say, it say uh, a PWA, it's nothing else than uh, a website which takes the good vitamin. What are these good vitamins? So let's summarize. It's something reliable. So HTTPS, you can get it um, even if you are offline. Also, it's fast, thanks to the service workers. And you can get some engage. Uh, you can better engage the, um, your uh, your customers with uh, by installing the application, getting some. Um, what the name? Notification, etc. Another great tool to help you to build uh, the best PWA, it's uh, Lighthouse. Lighthouse, you get it by default on Chrome. So I opened the, the dev tools here, and you get uh, a pan called Audit. And here, you can click to perform an audit. You select what you want. So here, let's select everything. And um, Lighthouse will scroll your website, check uh, about performance, how performant it is, and 2G network. Um, so blah, blah, blah. And after, it will, it will give you a report. So here, um, you're probably going to blame me for the, for the performance, because uh, I got a lot of images and I did not really optimize them. And maybe also you're going to complain for uh, some stuff because I put some CSS in the HTML. It's not really nice, but it's not the, the goal. Uh, do I need to wait? No, I don't have time to wa wait. So yeah, you can see what it is doing. And here, I got my result here. So I'm 64 uh, compliant with Progressive Web App. So there is problem because my application doesn't register a service worker. I don't. I probably break something. Uh, here, you can also get some uh, the first meaningful uh, paint. This is really interesting. Even if you don't want to build a PWA, uh, you can get some good insight um, from your website say, OK, I have to optimize this, this, to get a better SEO. Uh, something good with Lighthouse, you can also put it in uh, CLI. So by using it CLI, it means you can use it in your, uh, in your pipeline, uh, CI, CD, etc. Uh, another point really important, it's speed matter. Um, I like this picture. This is uh, the team from Red Bull. They are changing four tires in two seconds, while the average page load uh, on a 3G network is 19 seconds. Wow, 19 seconds. It's really slow. I don't know why. Well, no, we know. Basically, it's because of the analytics, non-optimization, etc. And something you have to keep in mind about uh, speed if half of the person of the half of the people expect your website to load in less than two seconds. And if your website load in more than three seconds, yeah, three seconds, you lost 50%. 50% uh, will bounce. So it can be something really nice if you want to, to sell PWA in your, uh, in your company. 
check the bounce rate. Uh, but unfortunately, today, um, there is things that we still cannot do in, your, uh, in a progressive web app, like I cannot access to NFC, to the calendar, to my contact list. So we have to wait. If you remember the, the screen from uh, the, the screen I show you uh, about what the web can do, uh, it's changing, it's moving, it's moving really fast. So uh, I discovered yesterday something called the, no, not yesterday, but a few weeks ago, something called um, Web Payments API. There is a lot of friction today in, uh, in your application if you want to sell something. Basically, on my phone, there is something pretty good is when I want to buy, it's already linked to my Google account. It's pretty fast to buy something on a, on a mobile on a mo mobile app. But on the web, you have to take your wallet, the credit card, etc. So yeah, to avoid this friction, they are developing uh, this payment request uh, API. And I think I did this in some really few lines of JavaScript. You, you can get something like this. So here, I give you a link if you want to buy an iPhone for 10 euro. It looks like this. And I got something from the browser here. And I got the detail of, of my bills. Here, I can put the, my credit card. And I just need to click on Pay, and that's it. I don't need it, so I will not pay it. No. Also, uh, unfortunately, the user yet are not really used to this um, to this install button. So I don't know. Maybe in a few years, people will use this. But for now, there is still a reflex to go on the on the store. So they, they have to work on it. If you check the the first version of the install button and what is it today, it changed a lot. So there. Are they are still trying to find the, the best way to engage user uh, through this uh, this button. Now, uh, the last part is about feedbacks. Um, uh, some company moved to uh, to progressive web app and they gave feedback to the community. The first one is uh, Twitter. If you remember the map, I show you I show you in Africa, for instance, there is no. Uh, the network is pretty low. Um, company like Twitter want to keep this market and want to better reach this market. So they create something called Twitter Lit. Uh, it's, it's just Twitter, but uh, you, in a HTTP request, you just take what you need to. So the, there is less, less, less more uh, requests. I think the, the full home page only took one, way, one, megabit, one megabyte to load. Uh, it's much more for the other app. Um, and yeah, when, when they did this app, after this, they take some metrics. And it's pretty interesting to see that because the app is better, there is better performance on the, with the browser, etc. So the user use more the applications, 65%. It's a lot. So and also people people use more the apps. They tweet more and they come back more often. The 20%. Also, uh, Forb did something pretty similar. They switched to PWA uh, plus 100% engagement. It's pretty good. It's well. It's awesome. Uh, the user use more the application, and um, yeah, you got the the source. It's also on uh, developer.google.com. It's a really good resource to switch to to PWA or to get some insight from company that switched to PWA. So it's uh, yeah, the developer blog from Google, uh, and also the the last one is uh, what Pinterest did. Pinterest, for me, it's the the most most important study from uh, from them. Um, so they say, OK, let's go to PWA. And they realize that people stay more on the app. They consume more. They get more money because they are based on uh, they use advertising, fortunately and unfortunately for us. Uh, there is more engagement. And after, they also did something interesting. They compiled the, 
the statistic from the native app and from the, the web app. And they realized that it's kind of the same. So if you remember, at the beginning, I was showing you this diagram. So today, where well, here it's in the same level, it's not in the same level, to be hon fairly honest, but it's changing a lot. There is a lot of improvement uh, from the browser. It's changing fast, so maybe yesterday you didn't want uh, a native app for some reason, but now you can do it because uh, your web apps can access to your position, geolocalization, you can also buy um, on your mobile, etc. So keep an eye on Keep an eye on this website, uh, what web can do dot today, etc. Because yeah, it's moving, it's moving really fast. Thank you. I think I got time for some questions. Yeah. So it is not possible to now pick up the ACC app if you have space. No. Uh, so your question is, is it possible today? To be in the um, in the application store, application store, you mean uh, the Android store and the iOS one? Uh, for now, the, the answer is no. Um, there is nothing I already check. Uh, the only thing is planned is from the Microsoft store to put PWA. Uh, after I think there is a reason. There is a reason why they didn't talk about it. It's also because. Um, um, because you have to follow some rule, mostly for the, I think the iOS, uh, for iOS, they, they scan or they scroll your, your application, etc. And for a, for a web app, it's a bit harder to, to check uh, what's inside. And uh, so for me, it's, it's the reason. After maybe it's gonna change, I don't know. Any other question? So if it's the end, the question if it's if it's the end of the native app. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't have my crystal ball. Uh, some people say native apps are dooms. Uh, it was the the introduction. Um, I truly believe that today the progressive web apps are in few few years. They're gonna get challenged. Mm. Does it still relevant today to build uh, to build native apps? Yes, for some companies, it's they are making all of the the money here. Uh, after I also saw some uh, even some applications they were only on the on native apps and they switch also to web apps like um, Tinder. They, they switch to PWA. There is a nice blog uh, still on Google and they're giving some insight. Um, so people. So people are switching to, to this because there is a need. Uh, I, I don't know if, if it's going to get replaced. Mm, from my point of view, yes, but I'm, I'm not really good for predictions. So. Uh, Yeah, I also put. If you check on the on the slide, I put some uh, some tools. Also, the, there is one called a PWA Builder. Uh, they help you to generate your manifest. There is a web web page test .org to measure the performance of your website. Uh, yeah, also, oh yeah, you were asking if it's still relevant uh, the native apps. It was on my uh, backup slide. Uh, this is the trend from uh, from Facebook. So. The, the the world go uh, on mobile, so yes, it's relevant to to still building uh, native apps. But PWA for me, it's also really interesting because the the mobile on the web, it's still the same. It doesn't decrease. So, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you can saw it. Well, here. So y your question is, uh, what's the website uh, about your pri privacy, right? So if there is access to, uh, I think it's there. Yeah, you got it in Chrome settings. So y you can see here, um, f for instance, uh, your web app can access to your geolocalization without asking you. Um, I was a bit scared when I saw this. I say, wow, uh, they can check a lot of things. Um, yeah, so your GPS localization, they don't need to, to ask you. They can access it directly. Uh, so here, the notification, by default, here I allow, but you can also block them. But the, the most important things to watch is what you can get by default. So yeah, here the camera, well, not here the location, it's the default, so they need to ask. Maybe it was on Firefox, it's by default. I don't really remember. So yeah. After you, you have to, uh, some stuff are, uh, are blocks. For some of them, they allow by default, so you, you have to keep an eye on it. Uh, but yeah, something good also with your uh, native apps, you know what, what they need. Uh, is that answer to your question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's okay for the time. Uh, maybe a quick last question. No, it's okay. Okay. Thank you very much.